Hello everyone, welcome back to Plant Happens. I hope everyone had great Christmas or any other holidays that you're celebrating. Um, we are having really snowy winter here in Vancouver this year and it has been really cold because we don't usually get this cold. I think the coldest we usually get is like minus one, minus two here. And it does snow every year, but not a lot. But this year it has been snowing a lot and the world is crazy here. I know the rest of Canada always make fun of us, but you know, it gets really frozen and slippery here. And because we don't have deep snow here, so the cities are not well well equipped to deal with it and that's why everybody just kind of freaks out and the uh, traffic's crazy bridges are shut down um, we have people stuck in the car overnight to get home so yeah it was really crazy before the winter break and then the winter break starts and i was hoping i get to relax but you know uh, i have two children and they get sick and sure enough they got sick at, right at the beginning of the break and we have been stuck at home ever since um, they had fever they were coughing and they're feeling much better now like much better that they can kind of get up and do whatever they want but they're still coughing a little bit but you know we've stayed home the entire week and we're still staying home right now but yeah i'm hoping both my husband and i will dodge this bullet and uh, we can keep going but I probably will jinx myself so knock on the wood if I have wood here anyways um so that's a little bit of um my life update but yeah so today I am gonna talk about top six uh, favorite Hoyas of December so um this video is going up this Friday which will be last video of the year um, oh, I wanted to go back a little bit. So um, in the beginning, when I started the channel, I talked about I probably will update, I mean, up, upload videos every other week. But when I can, I did upload every week. But, you know, sometimes I skip a week. So I think that's going to continue. If I have time to film, I will upload weekly. But if life hits and I have things to deal with then it's gonna go back to every other week and hopefully you're okay with that um you know um eventually i guess i do want to get to um be able to upload consistently weekly um but for now it's gonna be a little bit unstable especially it's cold and flu season here so i think think it might be a little bit unstable but I think I will still be able to upload at least every other week so going back to what I was saying um, today I'm here to talk about top six favorite Hoyas from um, the month of December uh, if you if you have been following me on Instagram or if you know me from you know local plant group you know that Hoyas are um, my love and they are just like my favorite what is it favorite spe not species favorite genera it's fair no favorite genus of the plant plants so um i think i don't think i'll do it like favorite hoya every month but maybe like every other month i can update you with like what i'm enjoying the most at the moment and um ho i'm hoping that it's gonna uh, interest you to go down the Hoya hole um, that's that has been my <laughs> general goal um, I, I know a lot of people especially Aroi lovers they think Hoyas are boring they're all the same but I know that a lot of people I've enticed to go down the Hoya hole has found love for Hoyas so um, I, I would like to do that here on my YouTube channel too so I think that's enough Chit chat. Let's get into top six favorite plan. Um, sorry, top six favorite hoyas of December. Okay, so the first hoya I want to talk about is hoya verticillata. Um, I don't know what exactly this 
kind is called, but uh, usually it's referred to as Hoya MA20 based on the person who first started selling this. Uh, that person gave it the name MA20 just as a code. But um, later on, people have been sharing this on Facebook group and then they've confirmed um, with the bloom that it's a, a variety of verticillata. So I'm hoping you can see like I have had a hard time focusing things last video. Yeah, it's still not focusing. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I kind of fiddled with the autofocus setting. Hopefully it's working now. So as I was saying, this um, is commonly called MA20, but it's also a verticillata variety. And I think people has confirmed that with the bloom. So this one, um, I guess for the most part, is very like not super special looking to a lot of people, but it has potential to grow very silver leaf. As you can see, this one is one of the newer leaf that grown on this plant and it's very, very silver. And I've had several leaves on this plant that grew really silver, which is always a good surprise, nice surprise. But even without the heavy silver, it has a nice silvery splash on it. Um, what I really enjoy about this plant is that how easy it is to grow. Um, I know a lot of people get silver Hoyas and hope that it will grow more silver. But in my experience, the silver or the splash of Hoya is very, very unstable. And a lot of times people will ask me like, oh, I bought this splashy Hoya, I bought this silver Hoya, and I'm not sure if it's stable. And my answer is always splashes are never stable, even with like silver spoon or what silver spoon, silver dollar, or like um, gray ghost, nova ghost, those I think are generally considered very stable with the silverness, but I don't believe it's a guarantee because um, the, I, I haven't found any way to increase the silverness of the Hoya. So what I'm trying to say is that Mm, as a seller myself, oh sorry, I touched my microphone. As a seller myself, I just I'm just really worried to say the silver is stable. But you know there are some species that are considered more stable. But ones like this, I especially worry because I, I cannot guarantee. As you can see, a lot of the leaves on here does not have very heavy splashing. But I do want to say if you do buy a cutting that has heavy splashing to start with, you will have better luck keeping the splash. So, you know, if for this spe specific one, it is very unreliable and it is very random. So I guess that's what I want to say about this one, which I that's why I enjoy actually. It's really easy to grow this plant big and then sometimes it's just splashy leaves, sometimes it's more silvery and sometimes it's more green, which I also enjoy. So if you like kind of like the surprise factor of the Hoya, then I think this one will be really good one to get. And uh, yeah, and I also kind of enjoyed this like leaf size. So, you know, it's it's just easy to keep it compact and easy to wrap wrap around trellis and it's not like going crazy because some of the bigger leaf Hoyas I'll show you later kind of goes crazy and like if you are especially if you're strapped with the um, space that could be difficult. But yeah, this one is very easy growing, very pretty, but it's nothing like super different. So, it it's it could be a good alternative to like Wilbur Graves and these are not um, very expensive too. So yeah, this is Hoya Verticillata aka MA20. Okay, so the next Hoya, this is the second Hoya I want to talk about is Hoya Platic Platicalis. Um, I've learned about this Hoya I think in early 2021 
Um, I saw photos on Instagram and the long strappy leaves really piqued my interest because it looked almost like strappy anthuriums. And the ones I saw online, I thought the leaves are really big. But um, when I bought this, I bought this from Christ Crystal Star Nursery in Canada. And uh, I think they started selling it um, last year as well, but it has been quite pricey. So I originally didn't buy it, but I've tried to import it mul multiple times. Um, when I say tried, I don't mean like I imported it to acclimate and failed. It's just I had a hard time finding it in in Asia. And um, there were several times people said they have it. But when I when it came to the time to buy it, you know, they've sold out and whatnot. So I never was able to really import it. So earlier this year, I think this summer, August or July, um, I finally just decided to buy it from Crystal Star Nursery because um, I just didn't want to wait anymore. Um, when I received it, um, if I can find the photo of when I received it, I'll put it like somewhere here. I was kind of taken aback because it didn't look the way I thought it will. Um, I still have a couple um, original leaf on here. I'm not sure if you will be able to see like this one. At the bottom, you can kind, sort of see, or this this leaf here. They were kind of, kind of, how should I say? It's not. It, it was not pristine, definitely. And then the leaf shape is so irregular and deformed. So I was like, oh, I didn't expect the, the leaves to look this way. But um, I didn't lose hope because I I know like. In the nurseries, they have to take care of thousands or tens of thousands of plants, so leaves can't stay pristine. And I was hopeful that if I give it like proper care, it's gonna grow into what they're supposed to. And I think it has. So hopefully you're able to see. So these are the leaves that's grown in my care. And I think they are really pretty. Um, can you see? Is it focusing? I hope it is. So there is like kind of like the ribbed effect throughout the leaf blade. And I still do think it reminds me a lot of um, um, strappy anthuriums. But it also it reminds me of um, the ficus aurelia. Like some, there's a type of ficus that kind of look like this. And I think this one is interesting because it's like very different from other anthurium, I mean, sorry, other Hoyas. This is one of the thin leaf Hoya. So if you're not into thin leaf Hoyas, this might not be for you. I do wish this was like the thick leaf Hoya, but um, I also have the Hoya Sulawasiana. That one is very, very much like a strappy Hoya that is thick. So if I have a chance, I will show that next time. But it's all so like tangled, I can't even bring it out. But this one, I think this one grows faster than that. So I do find thin leaf Hoyas to, be, to put out leaves much faster than the thick leaf Hoyas. But they also yellow easier for me too. So that's something to think about. Um, yeah, so I think this, I keep saying so, um, every time I edit, I'm just like very, very frustrated with how I talk. I'm just working on it, but for now, um, that's just <laughs> what I have to deal with. Um, anyway, so this is the Hoya Platicalis, and as I was saying, it's so different from like typical Hoyas, and um, I'm just... This autofocus is just so hard to work with, but I hope you can see how long and strappy these leaves are. And I can't wait for it to get bigger. Like I think I will cut some and propagate and make it a little fuller. So it's like kind of like a waterfall growing out of the pot. But I'm very happy with these new leaves that it's grown in my care. Yeah, so platicalis. If you're interested in like in having variety of Hoyas, I think this will be a good one to have. 
So next Hoya I have here uh, is very small, so I'm gonna bring it closer to you. But I have to read the name from my phone because I don't quite remember. Uh, this one is Hoya Affinis Colina from Papua. So I think the, this is one of the variety of the Hoya Colina or um, I'll, I'll put the name down here for sure but this one I received as a um, gift with purchase from um, a local seller Alice um, her website is Mrs. Koizumi Plant I will put her uh, website in here or maybe down in the description as well so I purchased some I, I've purchased quite a bit of Hoyas from her when I say quite a bit it's not like hundreds but like I've purchased Hoyas from her many times and one of the purchase I made she um, included this as a so, um, I think it was about like it was I think it was two leaf cutting as a as a gift with purchase and it actually hasn't grown for a really really long time and it was rooted in in this really algae ridden vessel but like it was not dying, but it was not growing. So I kind of just left it there. But um, after learning about the flat mites, I kind of sprayed, sprayed this um, Hoya with NO and sure enough, it started growing. I will talk about flat mites when I maybe talk about pests in the future. But basically what I learned is that a lot of people are doing sulfur treatments with Hoyas and you have to do it I think weekly for 8 or 12 weeks and I have kids and pets at home so like it's a little bit difficult to have the sulfur treatments especially when you do spray it, it does kind of smell and it kind of goes everywhere so I rather ha like I looked into if there's other ways to treat it and then I found on um, I think agriculture BC website that flat mites and uh, broad mites can be treated the same way spider mites can be treated so I had endo at home and it says that it kills spider mites. So I started spraying some of the Hoyas that look like ha that has flat mite, uh, flat mites damage, you know, those um, cluster of growth that all aborted. And then sure enough, a lot of them started to started growing. And uh, I also want to mention that when you do use endo, sure, like it will kill the mites and maybe it will start growing, but you do have to do it like repeated several times because there might be eggs that hasn't hatched that you didn't kill. So like I would say like spray endo weekly for at least like um, a month or two. You don't just like stop spraying. I do have some Hoyas that started growing and then aborted again because I'm assuming that the flat mites that hatched started eating the new growth again. So yeah, keep going with the treatment. Don't stop treatment just because it's started growing. And again, I went off the tangent about <laughs> the flat mites, but back to this Hoya. So I'm gonna get closer so hopefully you can see the Hoya. This one is a small leaf Hoya that has really really dark leaf with like very special silvery splashing throughout the leaf blade. I don't know how to describe this type of splashing. It's not the same as like the splash you get from other Hoya, but the Colina types always seem to have this kind of pattern and it's very pretty. I hope you can really see. Isn't it really pretty? I can't wait for this to be bigger basket of Hoya. I'm hoping I can cut this and propagate it but it's been like i said it hasn't grown for a really long time and it hasn't been a fastest grower so i don't think i'll get there anytime soon but i just really enjoy looking at this this hoya and you know that it's just the gradation within the leaf blade like i think you can see tip of the leaf is darker and then to the, towards the middle it gets a little lighter and the gradient is just so pretty so I've tried to grow a lot of different types of Colina 
um, species or colina cultivars. I'm not sure. And they haven't been easiest for me. I don't, I don't know why. I really enjoy the type of splashing they have, but they haven't been easiest to grow for me. So I would love to know your experience with it. Like what do they enjoy more? Do they enjoy more humidity? Do they enjoy more dry? Do they enjoy higher temperature? Do they enjoy cooler places? I've experimented at different locations at my house but they never really grow really grow well this one is actually like as small as it is this is the best i've got so far with this type of hoya so i'm really happy that this is finally growing and it's just the cutest hoya and again this is hoya affinis colina from papua the fourth hoya i want to talk about is hoya clemenciorum um I, sorry i forgot to mention this is not in any particular order it's just I, I place them in front of me and I'm picking them up at random and okay so this is Hoya Clemenciorum from Indonesia I my understanding is sorry I keep touching the microphone my understanding is that there are several types of Clemenciorum that's on the market and this type is specifically from Indonesia so the one from Indonesia I generally speaking has like lighter leaf blade color and then darker venation and it has small amount of splash and um, I hope you are able to see on here but the splash has ability to sun stress is it focusing uh, it's not focusing again okay hopefully you are able to see so the, there are some splashing that's turned pink and that's really cute I think and uh, Clemenciorum I think a lot of people feel is hard to grow but in my experience it has been much easier than Undulata and Undulata so I cannot grow, grow Undulata I don't know why I've tried it three four times I've tried to import it many times like two three times and then finally I'm like I can't acclimate it so I'm gonna buy locally and then the one I bought locally also died so I think I just I'm just not equipped to grow Andurata but I have been completely fine with Clemenciorum which is which makes me really happy but again the the other type um the Thailand type is it Thailand type or is it Vietnam type? I had to look that up. That one I find it to be harder, but um, I really love that one too. So I would love to grow that one as big as this. But anyways, I've made many cuttings from this plant. And at one point I wanted to sell this mother plant as well because it was just so unruly. It's so big and it just take us, takes up so much space. I was going to take a cutting and sell the mother plant, but I'm glad I kept it. To be honest, as big as it looks, it only have one, two, three, four, five, six leaves. So, you know, it's just... It's just a big leaf hoya, so it just takes up so much space, and it kind of gets in my nerve with all the, all the you know, the vines that's putting putting out. But the leaves are just so special, you know. This is one of the original uh, ancient dumpster hoya that we we talk about. The, um, we call these um, kind of crusty, um, wavy, like frilly, and then it looks like it should be dead. And they look like they came from like dumpster from Jurassic, Jurassic time, or like, you know, it's something that you would think will be growing when the dinosaurs are roaming around. But I think that's what makes them special. And um, the texture is just amazing, isn't it? Like the back of leaf looks like, looks crazy. <laughs> I mean, not crazy, but just, it looks like it's dying. You know, it's like, it looks like it's dried up and then it shouldn't be alive, but that's just how they grow. And that's, that, that's why it makes it special, I think. And again, this is Hoya Clemenciorum from Indonesia. And it's just so interesting. Having this, like, this is definitely like the focus of the cabinet. It's in the middle of cabinet and every time I open it, it's just like so in your face and makes you 
happy to see it and when the new leaf grows it's just so cute i i don't know how but when the new leaf grows it's just so tiny it's literally like this size but you can see the venation and it's like fuzzy it's just the cutest thing so if you are on the fence about this plant don't be on the fence just it's it's really cute and sometimes I grow out of love with the plant, but every time I'm brought back with this one. The fifth Hoya I have here is Hoya Polynura, Polynura? Hoya Polynura albomaginata. Say Polynura one more time. It's just, um, so this Hoya is also known as a fishtail Hoya because of the shape of the leaves. Um, it's kind of hard to show because it's so small. The leaf shape reminds people of fishtail or mermaid tail, and it's just very, very cute. It's very special shape. Um, I haven't seen any other Hoya with this kind of shape of leaves. And I think in 2020, 2021, um, this Hoya became really trendy and everybody wanted it. And then they had the silvery version, which I have the silvery version, which I also love. And, but, uh, as soon as this one, um, what should I say? So this one was first introduced to like the world that people came to know this plant and it was only in Australia. And Australia has very, very strict um, import export of um, plant species. So it was kept in there for a really, really long time and it was unattainable for us in North America. But soon enough, you know, people just found a way to export it or I'm, I'm not sure how it goes, but it became available in uh, Canada and United States. And I started to see more and more people have it. But, you know, I was not in a place to spend like thousands of dollars on Hoyas anymore. Um, so I kept waiting, waiting, waiting. And finally it became the price that I felt like I can buy one because I just wanted this so much. I think it's the most elegant looking Hoya ever and it is definitely my favorite form of Hoya polyneura. It's just the shape um, combined with the white the white variegation it just looks so pretty and so I don't know so clean and so elegant I can't wait for this to grow bigger and have like a basket of it. It will be so nice. I don't know if I will be able to grow this like on windowsill. Oops, the pond falling everywhere. But can you imagine this like trailing? I've seen people have big basket of this plant and it's just really, really nice. And when the leaves fully mature, they are dark green like these bottom leaves and the contrast between the white and the green is very 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 pretty but I also like when it's just new and you can kind of see the venation in the green I think that's really pretty too so I am glad I waited to get this one and I am very happy that this is finally in my collection and it's rooting very well in pond so but um I, I find that this one this this hoya tend to just grow one strand they don't like to grow like um, new growth from other growth points unless you cut it so i will have to wait for it to grow like a couple more nodes before i can propagate it but i'm i'm very looking forward to see this one grow and I hope I can grow this big. Again, this is the Hoya Polynura, Hoya Polynura as AKA Fishtail Hoya um, Album Marginata. And last but not least, this one is Hoya Joy Splash. Uh, Hoya Joy is a hybrid. Uh, I forgot what it's hybrid of. I think it's hybrid of I'll, I'll, I'll put it here. I'll put it here what it's hybrid of. But it is, it has been one of my favorite Hoya as, as soon as I get it. 
I, I bought it. I bought this one from Hoya Etc. Et um, she is a Hoya seller from uh, Montreal, I believe Montreal. And yeah, and I actually got this one with a trade. And I at that time, I was just looking for this Hoya really, like I just wanted it so much. And um, I think she was one of the only person who had a nice one. And I'm glad I did trade with her because um, this has really been like one of the best Hoyas in my collection. It grows really steadily and it's just <laughs> apple of my eyes. It, what's the saying? Apples of my eye? Apple of my eyes? It, this is my ESL speaking, but yeah, idioms are not my strong suit. Uh, anyways, um, so this, it, every time I see this Hoya, it just makes me so happy. And I've taken many cuttings to share with friends, sell at a uh, local um, plant group, and everybody seemed to really love this plant. Um, one funny thing is that every time I sell these big leaf Hoya, I post photos and I post photos holding it so you can see the leaf in comparison to my hand. And I think it looks like the leaves are big, but every time when people pick up the Hoya, they tell me, this is so much bigger than that. the leaves are so much bigger than I anticipated. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong to take photos, but like, I guess it's better than people come and pick up the plant and think, oh, this is smaller. So bigger is better. But I, I hope you can really see the leaf size of this plant. So like this is right beside my head. And I really wanted to show you this new leaf it put out like last time. I cut, there was a pop up with three leaves growing here, growing here. I cut and propagate to sell. And this is the first leaf it put out after I chopped it. And this is the leaf. Look how amazing that leaf looks. I hope you can see how shiny and how splashy this one is. And I, I'm, at, I'm gonna attempt to show how big it is. This is beside my face. This is beside my hand. It's like bigger than my hand. And I'm just amazed by this leaf. Isn't this, isn't this the prettiest Hoya? I, I'm gonna try to see if I can do like a cover photo pause. Is this gonna be a cover photo? I'm still learning. Anyway, so this Hoya is just so shiny, so green, so splashy. And again, the splash is not stable. I am getting stay I'm stably getting splashy leaves throughout the growth, but there are leaves that has very low amount of splash. For example, this one is almost only green with small amount of splash. But you know, it's it's been giving me it's been giving me splashy leaf consistently enough like this one and yeah but it also does grow like almost fully green leaf consistently as well so don't lose hope if it puts out green leaf um, my general rule is if three nodes in um, if it grows fully green leaves three nodes consecutively, then I'll chop back to the last splashy leaf to try to uh, promote it to grow more splashy leaf. But this one, um, so far, I haven't been worried about it because it's been pretty consistent. Um, and I do like the out alternating leaves, green leaves and the silvery leaves, but I'm just so in love with this leaf. Isn't it the prettiest leaf? Again, I can I can stare at this all day. The contrast between the silver and the dark green in the back. This I don't know, like the light reflection. What is it called? The well, anyways, the light. The the light I'm using is reflecting off the leaf, so it, it's a little bit hard to see. But yeah, this. This huge leaf, just I'm so happy about it. So yeah, this Hoya Joy is literally like 
so much gives me so much joy to grow and watching it put out new leaf and uh, right now it's um winter so it's not growing as fast but in the spring and the summer it was grow putting out new leaf like probably every two weeks and but you know uh, it's a big leaf hoya so i try to like chop it back when it's getting too big and people as i was saying people really seem to enjoy this hoya so i try to share it with my friends and local hoya group and yeah i do think this should be in every hoya lovers collection if you have chance to get hold of one definitely try to get one okay so that was top six um, my favorite Hoyas from December. Um, I hope um, I've shown you some interesting Hoyas that uh, piqued your interest and um, I'm just here to spread the Hoya love and kind of just give you a gentle push into the Hoya hole. Anyways, um, so 2022 has been a difficult year for me. Work was hard, home life was hard and you know I'm dealing with my own plant business and whatnot and uh, I just find it to be a lot for me to deal with and um, 2022 was the is and was the year of tiger until the Chinese New Year and um, it is a bad luck year for me because I am born in the year of tiger if you have um, Chinese or you know uh, Asian East Asian um, background you know what I'm talking about it's uh, every 12 years you have a bad luck year um, in in Japanese culture, it's a little bit different. They calculate the bad luck year a little bit different. But in Chinese culture, um, every every time you are in the year of the zodiac that you are born born with, then that's a bad luck year. Anyways, I don't know why I'm going, telling you this, but all I'm saying is 2022 has been hard. So you know, it's only a couple months left until the Chinese New Year and hopefully in 2023 I'll have better luck and you know have an um, easier easier time uh, navigating life but having the new YouTube channel has been very difficult at the time but fun uh, creative outlet for me and I hope I continue on and um, hopefully you enjoy my video and continue watching so if you liked this video please give uh, this video a thumbs up uh, it, it helps the visibility of this channel a lot and also if you like to see more videos please uh, subscribe and turn on the notification button if you don't mind um, so yeah I hope you had a great holidays and uh, wish you a happy new year. See you again. Bye.